In writing this article, The Eight Basic Payment Methods in Healthcare, one of my goals was to uh, help physicians and other clinicians understand the mysterious world of healthcare payment. What leads Medicare, Medicaid, commercial health plans to make the decisions that they make in setting up payment methods? I've lived in this world for the last 20 years. What I do at Xerox is I help Medicaid programs and other payers design and implement payment methods. This is an area that's received a tremendous amount of attention in the last several years. Everybody is talking about global payments, bundled payments, accountable care organizations, alternative payment arrangements, value, not volume. And frankly, it's confusing. I find it confusing. Different people will use the same words to mean very different things. So what I wanted to do in this article was to lay out a framework that would help people understand the, the different payment methods, what they are and how they differ, but also what their different implications are. The framework is intended to apply to all provider types, all payers, and not only the US, but also to other countries as well. It's built around uh, the unit of payment, the eight basic payment methods differentiated by the unit of payment. So, payment per year is a budget, uh, payment per beneficiary is capitation, payment per inpatient stay is an example of payment per episode. Of course, physicians are paid on a fee schedule per individual service. Uh, in practice, what we see is a lot of payment methods are a mix of these eight basic payment methods, but you can always go back to the eight basic payment methods. Whatever the unit of payment is, the provider has two strong financial incentives. One is to increase the number of units provided. The other is to decrease its own cost per unit. So, in designing payment methods, what are we trying to do? Well, it's really just economics 101. We're trying to get the incentives right. Two incentives really matter. One is we're trying to create incentives for efficient provision of care. The right care at the right time in the right way. Uh, and at the minimum possible cost. So that's the incentive for efficiency. We're also trying to create incentives to, for providers to provide access to care for the full range of patients. This gets at what I think is the most important statistic in healthcare policy, that 5% of the population accounts for 50% of healthcare spending. So if we push too much financial risk onto providers, then we're penalizing the providers who take care of the most costly patients. That, of course, undermines access to care for the patients who need it most. A good case mix measurement algorithm goes a long way towards helping us strike that just the right balance between the incentive for efficiency and the incentive for access. I think we can all agree that what we are trying to do in designing payment methods is to encourage more health for the healthcare dollar. And thank you.